So we're going to continue on talking about how we use puppetry in the classroom with my friend Kate Roberts, who is a primary school teacher who teaches kindergarten to grade six, and she also specializes in teaching ESL, so which is uh, English as a second language. So as we move on, Kate, what are the benefits of using puppetry in the classroom? Well, there are a lot of benefits of using puppets in the classroom, and I think the main one is the fact that they're just so engaging. Every time I take a puppet into the classroom, it gets the students' attention like that. And for me, I know that I enjoy going and seeing puppets in performances, and it's the same with young children. Another thing that's beneficial about using puppets in the classroom is for children who are from a second language, who are learning English as a second language, they often find it difficult to speak in English when they first start school. They're often quite shy mm. or a bit intimidated by the thought of having to use a language that they're not yet quite familiar with and be able to use it at a level where people can understand them. And so often they'll shut down and go into what we call the silent phase. Puppets are really great for helping to bring students out of that silent phase. I find that especially a quiet puppet who can just engage one-on-one -on -one with the students is a great place to start. They often feel more comfortable talking to puppets. Maybe it's because they know that the puppet won't get angry if they don't use English in the right context or won't necessarily correct them in the same way that a teacher would. And so it's just building that comfort barrier that makes it easier for them to converse with a puppet, which makes it easy for the teacher too to then know what they've learnt. Great. And what kind of advice would you give to teachers who are introducing uh, puppets in their classroom? I think it's really important when you're choosing a puppet to use in your classroom to use it for a specific purpose. So pick your purpose first. Is it for behaviour management? Do you need something for writing? Is it for maths? There's a whole range of different purposes you can use your puppet for. Once you've chosen your purpose, choose a puppet that suits that purpose. So for example, with Dr. Hoot, because he's a silent puppet who just has that very fluid range of movement to watch the children, he's great for behaviour management. He's quiet, he makes the children quiet, and he just observes and keeps monitoring. Whereas a puppet like Squawk, would not be anywhere near as effective as it's quite a loud puppet and if anything it would probably make them even louder if it was for behaviour. That's true. So it's good to hear that you just have one purpose per puppet and also to introduce them gradually. Those are really good mm -hmm. pieces of advice. For me I'd also say get to know your puppet really mm -hmm. well. Uh, spend some time uh, building a character before you introduce it to the children and you don't have to be a ventriloquist. It's really okay for you to move your lips as you talk because the children will be just looking at the puppet. And I'd also advise teachers to try and get a bit of training um, before they use a puppet in their class. Uh, there's lots of really good books out there and there are workshops that people can do and you can just search for them online. Okay.